what is it about child development and learning? We can define a child as anybody aged between 0 and 18 years. And we know that childhood is that time when children are really, really learning and learning to become healthy and responsible adults. But a child does not just become a child. A child is conceived. And it is those one, first 1,000 days of life that are very critical and important for any child. And it is also the first 60 days before a woman even becomes pregnant that are very, very important. Why am I talking about 60 days before the woman actually conceives? It's because if a mom is not ready to become pregnant, then she's not going to feed well, she is not going to be ready to have that baby, and she's not going to be relaxed enough. And it is at that time that a mom should prepare and take enough folic acid, enough micronutrients to be able to prepare her eggs to become fertile for that time when she gets her baby. And during the first 1,000 days of life, for those of you who have, who have calculators, I'm sure you, you'll have already calculated that the first 1,000 days of life are really pushing the baby up to two years, seven months, and two days. And it is during that time that a child learns whatever they need to learn when they grow. Uh, a human brain, a homo sapien, starts to develop from six weeks of pregnancy. And six weeks of pregnancy, mom may not even know that she is even pregnant. But that's when the brain begins to grow. And that is when mom should be eating enough to prepare for her baby. And indeed, when mom learns that she is pregnant, she should start talking to that baby. And even the dad should start talking to that baby. It is babies who have heard beautiful music, soothing, calming voices, that when they grow up, they are relaxed and caring and supportive of other people. But if a baby is in utero, in the womb, and all this baby hears is anger, struggling, fighting, not enough food, believe me, when that baby grows up into an adult, they are going to be rough, uncaring, unfriendly. No wonder people always say that babies born in August are happy babies. Please look back and find out how many of you were born in August. Babies who were born in August were made in December, during the December holidays. When <laughs> many people are relaxed and happy and on holiday and very likely celebrating. And no wonder many August babies are leaders, they are happy people. They are the ones who drive the world. So big ups to the August babies. <laughs> but even as we talk about child development and their environment and understanding what they need to know, because we know that the brain doesn't only grow because of genes, of the environment, but it also grows because of food. If you don't give the brain enough food, the brain will not grow. The brain is a complex wiring, a network of synapses, of neurons, of things that ne needed to transmit information, of things that needed to receive light and perceive it as a picture, of things that the brain needs to take in and perceive it as a word. But if the brain does not have enough neurons and enough synapses, then the person will not be able to understand a single thing. And guess what? A lot of times we say that the child, child's brain grows up to five years. But hello, what did I define a child as? Anyone aged between zero to 18 years. And in fact, some people even say that child development continues up to the age of 24. And that is why we must care for children in their second decade of life. A lot of times we struggle, we struggle to make sure that babies grow and reach at least five years so that we can satisfy or satisfy various intellectual quagmire. That we can say, 
we've achieved the Millennium Development Goals, that we've achieved the Vision 2040. But we must look at the individual child, that in fact, the child's brain continues to grow, and scientists have actually defined this and described this, that the brain starts to grow again during adolescence. And adolescence is that time of a child's growth, which is between 10 years and 19 years. The brain is made out of two parts. There's the gray matter, that part which covers the brain, it's also called the cortex. And it is that part that helps us to, re to have memory, to have deep thinking. It's actually the hard disk of your brain. Imagine a computer. If the computer doesn't have a hard disk, is it a computer at all? No. So the, the hard disk, or rather the gray matter, grows again during adolescence. And in order for the brain to grow to its, to its maximum, it needs to have a chance to sleep. And today we talk about enough sleep, especially amongst the adolescents. And it is during adolescence that people are in secondary school. Unfortunately, it is that time when people are not given a chance to have enough sleep. So what are we telling our learners? What are we telling the adolescents who are continuing to learn? That if you do not sleep enough, guess what? You will not reach your maximum brain development. A human brain is about 1.5 kilos. Please don't go and start weighing your heads to see if you have a good brain. It's an average weight. And in fact, when teenagers are growing, their brain thinks as well as that of an adult. And it is during adolescence that you will learn your maximum. No wonder in secondary school, we can be given up to 14 subjects and people get one, 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 one distinctions because the brain can take in everything. Unfortunately or sadly, if the brain does not be given a chance to rest and re-sign up, get back those transmitters again, the brain will not grow to its maximum. And after the child has reached 19 years, are they going to be able to have good memory of the things that they learned? Maybe not. So we need to talk about sleep is the new awake. When adolescents are growing up, they have things called hormones. And these hormones are helping them to, be, to mature sexually, to develop breasts when they are girls, to get muscles when they are boys. But it is these hormones that also make them a little bit different from adults. These hormones force them to sleep a little bit later. So adolescents or teenagers are more comfortable sleeping at 1 a.m. and waking up at 2 p.m., which can be a problem. If such an adolescent is in school, they are going to be forced to wake up at 4 a.m. and go to sleep at 9 p.m. So what will happen to this person? They'll become irritable, unfriendly, and defiant. And no wonder most of the strikes that we hear about happen in secondary schools. And as we said, growth and development can continue into 24 years, people who we call young adults. And these are university students. And the number of strikes happening right now at the universities, they are going up there. So we need to refocus, we need to rethink and change the way we are treating our children, right from when we plan to have them, to feed well, to relax, maybe to have babies during December holidays, <laughs> so that we are more relaxed and happy and less stressed when women are pregnant. But we cannot keep talking about women alone. We need to talk about the fathers, because I have not yet heard of any woman who got herself pregnant except, of course, the Holy Virgin Mary. But fathers need to be involved in the lives of the children right from the planning of the pregnancy. 
so that when father learns that his wife is now pregnant he will be the one to sing in his deep voice in a nice way in a comforting way so that as the baby grows they are not stressed and their brain is synapsing correctly and that even when the baby is born the father and the mother should both be involved in caring for that baby so that the baby understands that even though they were born from with a brilliant mom mom's brains are the you know the genes of a mom are the ones who give 70% of a baby's intelligence i'm not saying that men in this room should go out and marry the most brilliant women their 30% of their brain could be the one that is giving the baby that push okay but the environment in which a baby is born definitely impacts on how that baby will achieve eventually you cannot compare a baby who goes to a particular school with another baby who is born to a, a, a in a place where there is no school at all because learning can be coordinated but if you don't provide a lot of experience a lot of environmental support that child's brain is going to stagnate so we need to inspire and encourage our children right from the get go to read to them as soon as they can hear to read to them even when they are 2 months old because they are hearing those words and then during adolescence to encourage them to sleep early and to sleep enough because sleep is the new awake it is true that teenagers today are losing at least 10 minutes of sleep on a yearly basis and if you keep losing sleep you become irritable and you become even this is true for adults that if you don't sleep for at least 8 hours a day eventually you're going to become uncoordinated and and not coherent in your activities so learning in childhood is not only about the genetic brain it's also about the environment in which that child lives that as parents as caregivers as teachers we should support the young person to learn in a comfortable way and not push stress there's a stress hormone called cortisol and if a child is scared if a child is is stressed out the cortisol levels are going to go up and they are going to disorganize the other hormonal levels so you get what we call a hormonal imbalance and too much cortisol will eventually result in hypertension and it will also result in inactivity and it can also result in development of ulcers so we need to look at the child holistically and as we look towards child development we must make sure that the child achieves their fullest potential i always like to talk about the abc's of life and i hope some of you are not going to think about abstinence condom use blah blah no the abc of life which must be routinely told to every single child to help them acquire their fullest potential is a ask for what you want b be who you say you are c care about others and d dare to live your dream and indeed we must make sure that every single child dares to live their dream it doesn't matter whether they are high achievers or low achievers they must reach their fullest potential because they must dare to live their dream thank you very much